Hey guys, welcome to day 163 of my carnivore journey. I hope you guys are having a good day. And today I want to give you an update. We're going to talk a little bit about cheating on the diet. Um, but I'm going to give you an update as far as today goes. Uh, so for lunch, I actually didn't have anything for lunch. I think I held out. Um, I just wasn't hungry. So I don't think I really had anything. That's right. Um, dinner. Okay. Dinner right here. I had the chuck roast and eggs. So here's the deal. I, and this is something I probably also want to bring up today is preparation. <laughs> you should always plan ahead. Now I did take a pound of beef out of the freezer last night but it was still frozen in my refrigerator today. So luckily I had that leftover chuck roast threw that in the uh, instant pot, warmed it up. And uh, so ate a bunch of that and I had three eggs. Okay. Along like I had all that. Now when I was done with, and I had some scraps left over for, from the, the chuck roast, like just some, fat and you know like uh and like i said i try to eat the fat i can but you know what i mean just you know i couldn't eat everything um but i took what was left and i threw it in the food processor to like a, a meat paste or like a mushy i added some broth to it and made like this soupy meat paste texture it sounds gross but i poured it back into all the broth and stirred it up so it became this very like um grainy not even grainy like um uh, just and i don't want to say chunky but it, it's like a soup um so it's a really good broth so i'm really happy with that so that's good that was a good idea for me to take those and put them in the processor with some broth blend it way down like pulse it a few times got it really pacey and then put it back into the rest of the broth and it sort of diluted it back out and just made this you know really good uh beef broth i tried it tried a few spoonfuls after i had made it even though i was kind of full so <laughs> but it didn't matter I, I wanted to try it so i stored that put that up in the fridge so i'm going to use that broth i'm going to incorporate that into some kind of recipe tomorrow but i do have ground beef but like like i said luckily i had leftovers had i not had any leftovers I would have either had to fast or I would have had to go and drive to like a McDonald's and try to get, you know, a few uh, burgers a la carte or something and spend money. Guys, you really want to try to avoid that because, you know, you want to make your own food. You want the highest quality food that you can, right? Um, but anyways, but it was a good dinner. It was a good dinner. The eggs, the eggs hit um, three over medium eggs with um, the uh, chuck roast. And that chuck roast that had been... Um, sitting there in my fridge being happy for a few days, man, you know, that, that tasted amazing. So I'm a happy boy when it comes to all that. Um, now, as far as, and I got my coffee now, as far as cheat, cheat days, like, you know, you see on the title. So I did not cheat on my diet, but I wanted to talk about cheat days with you guys because I watch a lot of carnivore carnivore videos like you guys. And if you don't watch a lot of carnivore videos, you should. Um, because one, I think watching carnivore videos will keep you motivated. Um, but also, and I don't watch them all the time. Like I said, I do like to do other things. Um, but I try to, you know, squeeze in uh, some testimonials every once in a while, you know, at, at, at least one or two videos a day. If I can, you know, I, I really try to. Anyways, I've been noticing a lot of people that either maybe they were doing keto, maybe they were doing carnivore, maybe they started carnivore, and maybe they fell off the wagon, or when they got to holidays and special events. And, and that's what brings me up to cheat day. So... I, I never used to know anything about a cheat day. I would say until maybe, and I'm just kind of guesstimating, around 2010 time frame, 
2009 maybe i don't know i'm trying to think back to when i was when i when i first had ever started talking about any kind of cheat days and i had never really heard much about cheat days in the diet world maybe i was blind maybe i just didn't hear about it much but it was usually always like hey work out exercise live this lifestyle but then at some point i started hearing more and more about cheat days and not just from like but just from people in general, it's like it became this thing, like this like secret card. I don't, I don't, I don't know if maybe it was the diet industry trying to promote it more, and so more people were were taking on the idea of a cheat day. And I think it, I think it could have been the diet, the diet industry's way of trying to combat people saying, "Hey, your diet's full of shit, <laughs> and I don't get enough to eat." And so they're like, nah, you can have like a cheat day on Sundays or something, you know, at the end of the week, you know, just have, have fun, have a little pizza or something, you know, have a little cheat day. It's okay. You worked hard. And, and I noticed a different type of mentality started to occur with a lot of people I talked to and even myself back then and cheat day became a thing. Um, And like I said, there was a time when it wasn't, and I know what you guys are talking about. Or I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but I I started to embrace that cheat day thing. And of course, it never works out. Well, that mentality still sticks with a lot of people. And you do get to a point where there's going to be times where you're like, hey, I worked so hard. I've lost a bunch of weight. I feel good. I deserve that Reese's peanut butter cup, or I deserve that piece of cake or whatever, whatever, whatever's ailing you or whatever's like itching for you. But I would, I would say guys do your best to avoid that. And instead try to tell yourself, you know what? I, that's not the kind of um, reward that you're doing. Cause you're, you're really saying, Hey, I deserve to to sip on some antifreeze, <laughs> like right. It's tasty poison, guys. We have to remember that every time we start to feel like we might want to give up or slip back into these old food uh, habits that are deeply programmed into us, you have to remember. Wait a minute. You deserve better. You deserve a steak. <laughs> like if you're eating ground beef and all this other stuff. You know, pony up a few bucks, get you a top sirloin or something like get you a steak, a chuck steak, something, just a steak. If that's like, that's a real, a real reward, right? If you've been working hard and you're eating ground beef and eggs and bacon and you don't get a lot of steak, there's your reward. Have a steak every once in a while. And and I know some of you are like, but it's not sweet. I get it. But sweet is the devil. <laughs> it's the devil Bobby Boucher uh, but no just I just wanted to talk to you guys and remind you the big picture and don't don't get in that mentality of cheat days and you know you're not doing yourself justice believe it or not you're not all you're doing is giving in to like almost like a drug addiction or like an alcoholism if you ever was an alcoholic or drug addict or whatever, you're just giving in, you know, um, I'm proud to not drink anymore, you know, and I know that if I just went and picked up a beer, you know, I mean, could I handle it in the future after that? Sure. I'm, I'm sure I probably won't, but it's like, once you sort of break that, then you're allowing yourself in the future to say, well, you know, last time I had a beer and nothing happened. So then now maybe you've had a second beer in the course of a few months apart or something. And then after a while, you're like, well, you know, I, I mean, I could probably have another beer. Everything went pretty well. You know, we had a couple couple beers last time, had a small buzz, nothing happened. Everything was good. And now my friends want to get together again. I'll have a couple more beers, you know, didn't gain any weight, nothing happened. But you see what I'm saying? It's like, your mentality will slowly start to shift. And before you know it, you're like, you think you got to handle on things. All of a sudden, one day you're like, man, I'm starting to get um, a beer belly, <laughs> you know? And, and you just start thinking about 
or you know, maybe all of a sudden you have some other problems going on health wise, it creeps up on you and you thought you were handling it. Same thing with the food. It's like you think you're handling it, you're like, yeah, I lost weight. And then, you know, for me, if I was to go out to eat with people and you know, I caved in and had some dessert with them, you know, I know me. And because I would go back to carnivore the next day. The problem is it's going to be down the road when I start saying, well, I didn't really gain any weight. I'm still losing weight. I went back on carnivore. And then I start making exceptions. And then those exceptions will start to get closer together, the intervals. So again, I know one person said that um, being disciplined is not good advice. I semi disagree. I think you should stay disciplined, but also be forgiving at the same time. I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a balance, right? So what I mean by that is like, look, if you go to a family's wedding and you share a piece of cake with somebody, cool. You know, like, I'm not saying that there's never going to be exceptions in your life, but something like that is more of a social thing and you, and you may not always want to be awkward. I can understand those things. If, if that's what you really choose, I'm just saying you don't have to be a hundred percent hard on yourself, but I always strive for 99% hard on myself. I leave that 1% just in case something in life comes up, you know, What if I'm stranded somewhere and I had to eat crappy food? Like if I'm out survival-wise, I'm not going to beat myself up and be like, I'm on a carnivore diet. I can't. If it comes down to survival or whatever, you know, I mean, there's that 1% rule, right? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do it if I have to. But I'm just telling you guys, and just to pass on a little encouragement, it's just hang in there. And no, and and obviously you guys know that doing carnivore, it's gonna make you feel the best. I, I don't have to talk you that to that. That's the great thing about carnivore. You guys know for all of you that are doing carnivore, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's satisfying, it's it makes you feel amazing. You you can eat what you want as far as uh, okay, I, I take that back, but you don't have to count calories, what I meant really. Um but you do have to, you know, watch what you eat in that sense of, you know, you want to stick within the carnivore highway. But I'm just saying, you guys know what I mean. It's it's not real hard just to, to do carnivore and to justify it. But there's those deep-seated programming, and you're out there in life every day, and you're seeing things that you probably loved back in the day when you were doing the sad diet. I know because I I experience it when I'm out there. But yes, I love carnivore diet. I can stick to it. I I love eating my meat and eggs and all that stuff. But yes, I do get cravings from time to time. And I mean more of like mental cravings, not physical cravings, but more of just, you know, seeing stuff that triggers the old school part of me, the deep program. So again... For that, I just have to remind myself about the tasty poison and don't give in to any kind of cheat day mentality. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. I hope that helps. (laughs) Bye.